want to be used by you. The spiritual attacks have gotten next level. The hardest thing you can do in this 3D matrix is follow your dreams. And going against the herd or the pack, trying to be original and different is gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of pushback. And I'm trying to take the path of least resistance. Yesterday, my favorite tree, butchered. And all of the sap was coming out, it was crying. So I sat for an hour, an hour, and cried with this tree. I literally cried for an hour, sobbing. I felt its pain. God always sends me earth angels to fellowship with. So this 70 year old gentleman, he was telling me how he's focusing on the New Testament because that's the promise God has given us. The Old Testament, you really lose faith in humanity. It's a lot of just um, awful stuff. <laughs> and uh, he told me to start with the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans and then go to the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. So I did that. And then after that, another guy with three big dogs that were so loving came and just raised my serotonin. Thank you, God. Literally, these big, I, I fell to the ground. They were loving on me. <laughs> it was so, they thought I was one of them. It's really cute. What I learned yesterday, what my favorite tree at that location, because I have favorite trees everywhere and I would say my favorite favorite tree is another pine tree that inspired the title of my book so I learned yesterday I had a realization that I can't be having favorite trees I have to expand my love to literally everything and also to really enjoy what you have when you have it because you never know how, how long you're gonna be able to savor those moments like me i learned how to do pull-ups on that tree i would do the dead hangs first to get strong enough and then i did the negatives for the pull-ups and then once i did that and you know doing those type of things with nature i don't think you understand doing that with a tree like th this tree really helped me and i know it's still alive but they didn't have to cut those big they didn't have to they didn't have to they could have trimmed it and it just breaks my heart Ugh. so when i'm under spiritual attack i don't eat you know how i remember back in the day in the 90s there was a bunch of rom-coms and they would always show when the girl got was going through a breakup when she got depressed she would like eat a whole thing of ice cream or not me. I eat when I'm happy. So when I'm under spiritual attack or stress or whatever, I just like forget to eat, you know? So I'm back at 101 or 102, something like that. This is me. I'm that Barbie that nobody can have no more. Mm -mm. Glory to the real king. I know a lot of you, like my extended family specifically, might be wondering how my family let me sleep in my car, but they didn't know. <laughs> so when my place caught on fire, I w my husband and I were making really good money. We were running a company for somebody. We just spent, I spent all my money on rescuing animals. So all my money went on food because nobody, I wasn't being paid to foster. It was just God bringing me all of these animals because I had all this love to give. And after Kirk died, 
and I didn't know like what to do with it, you know? So, and then my husband was buying all sorts of supplements because he was a bodybuilder. So, you know, like saw, palmetto, horny goat weed, cat's claw. I mean, you know what I mean? Or no? Okay. I was into like maca and um, dong. Yeah, Pew, I don't know how to say it. And also Shisandra, and just those are the, the herbs that like I was into, nettle, but I would make the nettle tea. I think it's stinging, stinging nettle. So anyways, when our place caught on fire, we had renter's insurance. Two nights they put us in um, the Marriott. I lived in Hacienda Heights, so I don't remember if the Marriott was in Diamond Bar or whatever, I don't remember, but Anyways, we couldn't, they didn't allow pets, so I had to put Kirky in a kennel. And I don't know what they did to him, but I pray to God that that kennel and any other, whether it's a vet, veterinary, any other establishment, business, or even a home where an animal is being abused, I pray that God please help them because these animals can't talk. But anyways, after I left Kirky there, he's been, he was never afraid of water before. And since then, he's been so afraid of water. It's been years. See, it's been three and a half years since the pandemic and the fire happened probably like a year and a half before that. So it's been five years, he's still afraid of water. I couldn't even take him through the car wash. I can't, every, still to this day when I wash him, he's so scared of water. So I believe that the guy like sprayed the kennel down with a hose and he, I don't know what he witnessed because that is not enough to me for how much trauma he had. I don't know what he witnessed. It's some sort of abuse or whatever, but it had to do with water. I don't know if they hosed down some other dog because I know to a lot of people to train will spray the dog um good boy good boy good boy i have to be careful because satan sends Remember last time I told you those people staring and Kirky's such a good boy he didn't embarrass me because what they want and he feels their energy he's smart he's like they're not cool I'm not gonna go to them but they're looking like her dog's off the leash what is she doing and some guy walked by right now with a big old German Shepherd and kept looking these some people are instigators and thank God he's smart enough now where he doesn't he used to he's eight now you know I've had him since he was eight weeks but he used to run off and embarrass the crap out of me and now he doesn't do that anymore. But anyways, after the whole kennel thing, um, be careful where you leave your dog, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I don't trust anybody. I always said if I ever had kids, I would never leave them with anybody because I've everybody I've talked to, the abuse has always been someone they trusted, like a family member or a friend of the family. Or in this case, complete strangers, but it's like, what <laughs> you know, the kennel or whatever, or, or even the there's like pet hotels, wherever. You just don't know what's going on so after the fire okay I can't I rebuke you Satan I'm covered in the blood of Christ you can keep trying to distract me it's not gonna work <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so after that we stayed in extended stay America because they allow pets um, I didn't know I just wasn't thinking. It's not that I didn't know. I wasn't thinking because of the shock I was in. You know what I mean? Maybe a week or 10 days after staying in the hotels, I got an Airbnb, you know, which was bigger and nicer. And basically, we stayed together for about a month after that. He decided to go back to Texas. His brothers were there. That's originally where he came from. And he, so he basically said it was easier for him to go with his brothers and for me to go with my dad because my dad didn't like my husband and my husband's family didn't like me or 
Yeah, I think they didn't like me. I don't know what happened. I don't remember. But so I knew I was like, if you leave, that's it. And at the airport, he asked me, he's like, am I abandoning you? And I was like, what a dumb question. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't going to get back together with him, but he thought we were going to get back together. So that um, was that. And then when I went to go stay with my dad, my stepmom was like, if you want to eat our food, you can play mediator because she wanted to get a divorce from then. They ended up getting a divorce during the pandemic. Actually, she's been talking about getting divorced for decades, <laughs> probably even from the beginning. So I was like, I don't even eat that much. Like one avocado, seriously. I was like chain smoking, I was so depressed. Um, I smoked American spirits back then. And I would usually get the yellow or the orange because they're lighter than the light blue one. But anyway, so I was like, okay, you know, like you don't have to bribe me with food because I, I don't, like you don't know how to ask me for help without you know some people are transactional there is no unconditional love you know when I give something to someone I don't expect anything back so I sat with them for like six hours and my eyes started tweak ticking like you know what I mean twitching and I I was like whoa every time I thought I made progress they would go back and bring some stuff up so their place was so small it was a two-bedroom apartment with one it was like a duplex not an apartment you know what I mean so it was like still small two bedroom one bath and my dad and my stepmom were in one room and my brother Razi was in the other after that I kept trying to stay at my dad's but I couldn't and what made me realize I can't stay there it's dangerous and I ended up sleeping in my car for six months and I didn't tell them they all thought I was probably with some guy or something but because I'm very private I just people want me to like and I'm like no bye so the reason I realized it's dangerous is because one day Cindy was fighting with my dad and I was like, is there any, I came out of Razi's room and I said, is there any way we can go one day without fighting? Without you guys fighting? And then she was like, go back to your cave, little girl. And I was like, oh, you fucking fat bitch. You think I'm scared of you? So I went up to her and she went in my face and I was like, I'm not scared of you, you fucking fat bitch. Do something. Because I was an assassin in my past life. So <laughs> that's why I'm telling you my energy gets people like scared. I don't even have to do nothing. But my energy is like. And they and you know, so it some people have a death wish. Straight up, some people have a death wish. And some people bring out the worst in you. She called the police. And she lied and told the police that I laid hands on her. And my dad said, me and Razi are witnesses, so you better take that back. And when the police came, they basically told me, you know, she's on the lease, you're not. So just stay away from her. And I was like, I'm out, man. I'm gonna go sleep in my car. So I was sleeping in my car for six months. That's a good boy. Okay, anyway, so I came to do some writing. And I just wanted to show you guys, like this is the tree. Just sitting underneath it. it comes all the way out here and then I like to use that tree as like a pull-up bar it's very very sturdy very sturdy so anyways um I wish you could see it from my perspective it's really really cool I feel so blessed to ground here. Oh. Shame on me. I'm eating something processed. Sorry. Look what they did. Good boy. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I am so sorry. This is a sad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're still standing. Mm. Mm. Yesterday, 
all around here got white and my clothes too. I didn't know sap turns white. And I probably look like, you know, that clip of Dave Chappelle. I have to find it where he's like, a crackhead, you know what I want? There's memes of it. Wow, I really got the sap when it was fresh yesterday. I came the day before yesterday and I didn't notice I didn't come over here. I noticed the tree um, container that they were doing some work. But I'm so glad because the day before that I came and thanked it and loved on it. So it had been a while because I've been going hiking. I haven't been coming here. So glad I have some old footage. Let me show you guys of me climbing it. I'm gonna kick it with this tree a little bit. I love you guys. <laughs> Dispensa is he doesn't really like you know talk about God or whatever he says universe or whatever but I think it's because he wants his reach to be bigger um, but he said every I watched a video where he said every morning when he wakes up he says source creator whatever I would say God because it's just a word and if it triggers you again you're you're just letting me know your level of emotional intelligence that you're at so he said to say, show me something, show me. And that's what happened. As soon as I said, show me, show me, I want to see more. I, the signs became patterns and now it's next level. They took the Bible off the best selling list because they don't want you to know. It's the number one bestseller of all time. So now when I pray, I pray for your will to be done in my life. I pray to complete my mission, my purpose that you created me for God. Whatever you created me for, whatever is my purpose, I pray that I step into my power and I pray for your will to be done in my life. I surrender completely 100%. I am dead. I am a 100% vessel for you, 100%. I crucify my flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, oof. I'm gonna leave you with this. Question everything. Spirituality is your own personal experience. This is spiritual warfare. This is a war on consciousness. It's ego versus spirit. 